Hello, I'm Dr. Jean Arian, a faculty member in the Physical Therapy Program at the University of South Alabama. I'd like to speak today about the profession of physical therapy. With regard to the profession of physical therapy, there is um, a large number of settings in which someone can practice once they graduate from physical therapy school. And so that's the nice thing about physical therapy. Um, you can practice anywhere from a pediatric setting, seeing young children, to older adults, older adults that may be very well and very fit to those that um, have problems with things that they do in their daily life. In addition, we also think a great deal about physical therapists practicing in what we refer to as inpatient settings, such as in hospital-based facilities where they see patients that are in for surgeries or have had an accident, or those that have had a heart attack in the um, critical care units within a facility or within a practice. And we also think quite often about physical therapy practicing in outpatient settings um, where they might see very high level athletes that are recovering from injuries or from prevention um, to prevent injuries. Also general orthopedic conditions such as back problems, um, extremity problems in the knees. We see a large population of what we refer to as the baby boomers as they're aging and still very physically active. In addition, another area of practice um, might be for those patients with neurological disorders such as strokes, um, those that may have Parkinson's disease or multiple sclerosis, um, where they have problems with functioning on a daily basis because of their neurological problem, and we help them to recover and regain as much of their function as possible. In addition, you'll see physical therapists that practice in the home health environment where um, patients um, don't have the ability to come out of their home and they need to be seen in their home environment for rehabilitation. So we often see patients in that arena. Getting back to the pediatric population, you will see physical therapists that are in the school systems helping children to function in their school environment and to be able to progress within the school system. You'll see children being seen on an outpatient basis at hospital-based facilities or in um, private practices. In those situations, the children will be seen after school or in the summer to help recover or regain function if they've had problems uh, from birth, such as cerebral palsy, spina bifida, Down syndrome, autistic disorders, and in addition there are other very specialized areas of physical therapy practice such as wound care, women's health, aquatic therapy, cardiovascular physical therapy, and so there are very many different areas in which we can practice. Some therapists do go into administrative roles within um, facilities, some go into private practice, that is also an option. Since the profession of physical therapy requires a clinical doctoral degree, our students need to come to us in any program in the United States with a bachelor's degree first. As far as the bachelor's degree, there is no requirement for a particular degree to come to a physical therapy program. Some of those degrees, though, which our students have before coming to us are in biology, chemistry, psychology, therapeutic recreation, but the majority of our students probably come to us with degrees in exercise science, kinesiology, athletic training, and so those degree programs have coursework that really lend themselves to, to preparation for the requirements in our program. Coursework in anatomy, physiology, chemistry, biology, physics, social sciences, such as psychology and sociology, and then within exercise science, those areas of movement science, biomechanics, exercise physiology, really prepare, our, that prepare students for our program and any program in physical therapy. As far as the preparation for programs, most physical therapy programs across the United States are highly competitive for admissions. So 
the coursework that's required for most of the programs across the country include biology, chemistry, physics, anatomy and physiology, statistics, social science courses in sociology and psychology. And the coursework, even from the freshman year on in college, need to be done very well. And so the students have to come into college knowing that their grades are very important from their first semester in college. Once admitted to a physical therapy program, the coursework has a wide variety of preparation for all practice areas within physical therapy. Most programs are about three years in length. As far as the clinical intern internship com component of most programs, the students are required to do an average of about 35 weeks of clinical internship time. Some of that time is in early in the curriculum, in the first year and second year of the program, but the majority of the internship is in the last year of the programs. And some of the programs have a full year of clinical internship, depending on where you look at as far as the programs. There is a large component of laboratory work as far as preparation of patient care within the academic programs in physical therapy. And so not only classroom work, but also lab work and preparing you to treat patients. In addition, there is usually some type of a research component, not necessarily a dissertation or a thesis, but some research component within the physical therapy programs. As far as completion of the physical therapy program, there is a national licensure exam. A physical therapist student must take that licensure exam and pass that exam in order to be able to seek licensure in any state within the United States in which to practice. And so licensure exams are very important also um, to complete that successfully in order to practice as a physical therapist in the United States. Some of the suggestions that I might give a student who's looking at the profession of physical therapy goes back as far as high school. We really recommend that students take higher level sciences in high school to prepare them for the types of science courses that are required once they enter college. Once they enter college, students um, really need to buckle down right from the beginning of college to make sure that they do well in their courses even in their freshman year. That's very important because when you apply to physical therapy school, because it is a degree that's after, after you achieve your undergraduate degree, it's very difficult to do better if you have a hard time when you first start college. So it's very important to start out with um, a good background and to also do well with your courses in the beginning. Also, most physical therapy programs require you to get observation hours or do what we refer to as shadowing a physical therapist while you're in college and even in high school to make sure that this is the profession that you really want, to look at those variety of settings and to observe in those variety of settings, in a home health setting, in a hospital setting, in an outpatient setting, in a pediatric setting, in a nursing home setting. So it's very important for you to have a full understanding of what the field of physical therapy is all about and what different areas of practice you might be able to participate in once you're out as a physical therapist. It's also real important to understand some of the political issues in the world of physical therapy, some of the health care issues as we look at the problems that we have in the United States with health care, with reimbursement, with coverage. And so it's very important for students, even in high school and in college, to have a good understanding of some of the political problems and the social problems that are related to health care and physical therapy in particular. We highly encourage students to look at the American Physical Therapy Association website that that does provide a background for students about the profession of physical therapy as well as about some of the issues that are related to our profession and staying in our profession and being advocates which, for our patients which is so important and that's very um, important to us as physical therapists to really care about our patients and to make sure that they receive the best patient care and have the best access to our care that we feel we can provide.